everybody and welcome back to BK's Bolts. Today we're going to talk about Thor by Jason Aaron with Gore the God Butcher. This is the Complete Collection Volume 1. Hey everybody and welcome back to BK's Bullets. As always, I'm your host, Brent Casina. We are back in the man cave. The water mitigation issues, if you've been following the posts on the channel, are kind of stagnant for now. I need a floor uh, replacement thing, but it's dry. There's no more machines running in here, so that's nice. So we can get back in here. I can use the man cave. I can use it to record videos. We have our backdrop. Things will be more normal at this point. But uh, thanks for sticking with us. So Thor by Jason Aaron, right? Jason Aaron is the talk of the town this summer in terms of Marvel movies as the upcoming Thor Love and Thunder, which premieres in just two or three weeks by now, is going to be focusing on two of the main storylines found uh, within his Thor run. The first one using the villain Gore the God Butcher, which appears here. This is the Thor Complete Collection Volume 1. There's also a story, like a saga of Gore the God Butcher that I think is out are coming out in the next couple of weeks. So if you just want the first 11 issues um, in here, I don't know if it has the, the finale, the King Thor stuff in there or not. Um, but if you just want the first 11 issues that kind of kicks off this volume, not kicks off, but the first two thirds of it, I mean, really it's, it's like to right here kind of thing. Um, you can pick that up or you could still search this out. Me personally, I would search out these complete collections. They are still available. I've seen them around in bookstores, in comic book stores. I think they're definitely still available online. That's where I got most of mine. And um, because you're going to want to read the entire thing. Like you're going to want to read, I mean, this first volume is phenomenal for the gore, the God Butcher story. The second story what has Malekith, the Dark Elf here, and that's kind of set up for the War of the Realms event that kind of ends the Jason Aaron Thor run. That first storyline in here is is okay. It's not that great. It's drawn by Ron Garney, who does a pretty good job on art, but it's really set up and kick off for stuff that's gonna come down the line later. So the main attraction in this volume is the Gore the God Butcher storyline, and I think that's what I most enjoyed reading about in this volume. This is 18 issues, by the way, one through 18. And, um, the Gore the God Butcher stuff is the first 11 issues. It's five issues, then the sixth issue, which is like the origin of Gore, and then another five that ends it. And then you have some uh, intermediary, like I think there's a, a, the 12th issue is like a single story about young Thor, and then you go to the Malkit stuff, and then you go back to young Thor. Uh, anyway, it's, it's a really good kind of structure, and, and I really did like it. So... Jason Aaron, almost 10 years ago, started this Thor run. So this Thor run starts after Matt Fraction, um, which is after J. Michael Straczynski in the Civil War era, post-Civil War, where you had Thor was dead from Avengers Disassembled. Uh, that event, like there was a corresponding tie-in called Ragnarok, written by Michael Avon Oming, that ended the Asgardians, and Thor was missing for a lot of time. You think he comes back in Civil War? Turns out that's not actually Thor. That is what's dubbed Clore. It's a uh, almost like an android Thor created by Iron Man and Reed Richards. You can follow his adventures in Avengers The Initiative. But anyway, shortly after Civil War, we have J. Michael Straczynski's run where Asgard comes to Earth over Brox in Oklahoma. Thor comes back with Donald Blake and his resurrecting gods. Uh, that leads into Siege, where Asgard is kind of defeated and crashed and just destroyed. And then you have Asgardia in Fractions Run, which I'm not that familiar with, leads into Fear itself. And then that is over with, um, I think it's a crossover with Journey into Mystery, which I never read. Everything Burns, I think it's called. Anyway, that ends, and then you have Jason Aaron's Thor. It started off with Thor the God of Thunder was the name of this monthly title. Uh, and it's got art by the wonderful wonderful Isad Rivik. Now, I can't quite remember where this fell in terms of Isad Rivik's career. Like, he was doing lots of covers for a while. Like, he was the original cover artist on House of M back in the day um, in 2004 or 5, something like that. Like, House of M has Isad Rivik covers. So he's been doing Marvel stuff for a long, long time. But what I'm saying is I can't remember if this is before or after I 
think. Yes, this is before Secret Wars. So he does this, then he goes and does Secret Wars with Jonathan Hickman, and that now he is doing um, Eternals with Karen Gillan. That's fantastic stuff. So he's just a phenomenal artist. Um, I'll open up some of his stuff here. Very detailed, very painterly, um, and very, like, I would call it almost not minimalist, but minimalist in terms of the way that they use colors rather than like deep, heavy black inks. Like the easiest thing to compare them to is um, you got like this page right here, which is with um, Isad Ribic, and then the sixth issue has Butch Geis, which is doing a much more like, like inky black style. Um, this is where the all black comes to earth. And that's got some real inks on it, as opposed to Isad Ribic, which is more like colors over his really strong, sharply defined, detailed pencils. Uh, anytime you're seeing black in here, <clears throat> in in the book and the art, you can actually see like the shading and the pen, the the pencil strokes uh, of like solid shading that um, Mr. Ribic did here, and it really gives this like not just hand drawn, I mean that's all, hopefully that's all comic book art, right? But really organic feel to the pages that sort of grounds the godly idea and storyline and all the stuff that's happening up here. It grounds this in this sketchy, uh, not sketchy per se, but pen pencil sketchy, um, but precise line work that's realism and you can tell like this is a tale that is told um, it's not really rendered like this page right here where this is Thor. I don't know if you can see it in the video But as you get closer and the black starts to fade into like the color down here You can see the individual like, you know when you're coloring something with a colored pencil or sketching it yourself And you're coloring it in you're not doing everything in like, you know one big stroke You're doing small little ones inside an area and you can see all that here every time you see like a, a filled in black rather than the traditional comic book like I'm gonna fill in everything black with the paint with the um, the paint bucket, like on this page on the left here or on the right here, right? <clears throat> so that is really really a cool thing about the art as you realize you're, you're reading it and going into it. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful effect. The colors here are phenomenal. Um, Dean White and uh, Ives Sivorsina are doing the colors here on the uh, Gore the God Butcher stuff. And then you have, um, yeah, Eve coming back to do the rest of the book as well. <clears throat> Except for the last issue, which is like painted, basically. This last issue is really, really fun. It's like an old flashback tale. So the cool thing about this, uh, the first most of this, with the Gore of the God Butcher part, is that you have three different tales going on at the same time that all intersect. Um, it's the Gore of the God Butcher saga, and you're reading it with modern Thor, which is the guy here on the cover. You're reading the first time he encountered Gore the God Butcher when he was a young man before he earned the right to wield Mjolnir. You're reading it as he's an old man and he's almost, he's Odin, he's not Odin, but he's in that same role as King of Asgard, the Allfather, but he is the last remaining God in the universe and Gore has kept him alive and there, he's finally realizing a way to defeat him. Um, so you're kind of like reading all these th three things at once in the beginning of this storyline, um, the first five issues, and you're like, where is the, there's stakes in each storyline as you're reading them, but you're almost like, where is this going, uh, how is this going to coalesce into something that has stakes, because you know in the beginning this is going to leave off somewhere, it's not going to have any finality because he meets him two more times kind of thing. Uh, you're reading the modern Thor storyline and you're going, well, what danger is he in? We know he's going to live forever, that kind of thing. And it's really until the last half of that storyline in the second part of it, uh, it's the God Bomb storyline where all these things kind of converge and the two, the young Thor and modern Thor go far, far into the future or in so far out in space time that they all converge in the same moment so that you have three gods of thunder, three Thors, um, like this page right here, which I luckily turned to, all coming in at the same time to defeat and battle Gore the God Butcher, which gives you splash pages like this, which are phenomenal, into just the most epic moments you've ever read of a Thor book. Um, and that is one thing that 
if I recall reading Jason Aaron's run the first time, I've only read it once as it was coming out, uh, he is great at making these massive Thor-worthy moments. He does that with this character, he does that with Lady Thor, he does that in War of the Realms. He finds really cool moments to make the God of Thunder stand out as a god rather than just another Marvel superhero or a person with powers. Um, so that is what Jason Aaron does the best here in the storyline. Um, the Gore of the God Butcher saga doesn't really deal with Asgard or the Warriors 3 or all these other like side characters. They will come into the storyline later. Uh, and they do come in here with the um, the League of Realms storyline where you're fighting Malekith the Accursed, the Dark Elf, who was in Thor the Dark World, uh, after all. But he wasn't really, like, done well there. And it's only until this storyline and the entire Jason Aaron run that you can't really kind of realize the real threat that that villain is supposed to be, as opposed to however he was portrayed by um, Christopher Eccleston and the writers of that movie into just this generic one-note villain. So this really does wonders to like rehab that villain's image almost right after that movie came out because there are, uh, I think there's like a, a movie tie-in variant cover on one of these pages here and it's for the second movie, The Dark World. Uh, so it's kind of a laugh if you're reading the Gore of the God Butcher saga knowing that Malekith is on screen and um, is doing a terrible job being a villain, one of the worst Marvel movies ever made, <clears throat> only to then be, you know, kind of redeemed in this Malekit storyline here in the back of this volume and really be made a real threat. And then to have that threat grow over the next, what's going to be four volumes or five volumes total of this complete collection series, this, you know, almost 10 year run on Thor is just phenomenal. Uh, so really, really cool. But yeah, you got to read this volume just for the Gore of the God Butcher stuff. So if you're interested in reading Gore of the God Butcher, read it here. This is where everything Taika Waititi is going to draw from, why he wants to kill all gods, why he hates gods. And you get that storyline in issue number six, and it really does make sense. It really gives you like this feel of why someone would want gods and then turn to hate them uh, in such a way that he is determined to, once he gets this power... He's determined to do it to all of them and to re <clears throat> remove this reliance on something supernatural for everyone so that they can just be happy and live their life um, as they can without any like feeling like there's otherworldly circumstances out there or a false hope, a false sense of security, that whole thing. So his motivation really does make sense in the book and that's what makes Gore such a compelling villain. So the fact that they have Christian Bale playing him in the film, even though they're really not adapting his look from the comics, other than he's, you know, all white kind of thing, like in face paint or whatever the heck is going on, desaturated from color. Um, <clears throat> there's no tentacles or anything in the, in the movie look that we've seen so far. But the, if they can just get that relationship to match, to get his motivation right in the film, then he's going to be a really, really interesting villain to watch on screen. Um, this volume doesn't get into the Lady Thor stuff. The second complete collection does, which we will review in a future video, and that will, we'll have that up probably right before the movie comes out, if not right around then, and get into all of that. But I gotta say, Jason Aaron's Thor starts off with a bang with this Gore the God Butcher storyline. It blew everybody away at the time, and it's still one of the best little, you know, 12 issue, 11 issue runs of Thor out there, bar none. So if you haven't read it, Go find this complete collection or go pick up an upcoming one that's just focused on that gore storyline. You will not be disappointed. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal read. So two thumbs way up from me on this complete collection, volume one by Jason Aaron. Thor, going to be our new theme of the month probably as we reread the Jason Aaron run before the movie comes out and after the movie comes out because i got to finish stuff. you got to finish stuff. Even when you start it, you got to finish it. Uh, so anyway, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next time in The Funny Pages.